architects from Lithuania, and uh, we would like to introduce you our project uh, based on Blender, and uh, it's called Digidan 3D. Um, so, uh, first of all, why are we doing this? Uh, even if Blender is a very powerful and good uh, tool for modeling uh, and animation, uh, it lacks some uh, some features uh, that uh, that is needed uh, in the area of design and creating uh, building projects or uh, some or making prototypes, uh, uh, something like that. So. Um, of course, there are a lot of commercial uh, products, uh, but we cost a lot, and I'm not sure if uh, you are designing table lamps or, I you know, some s uh, small things for your own. You, you would like to pay Autodesk uh, $5,000 for a software to make a table lamp. Um, so, um, uh, at least now, there is uh, no such a product in the market. Uh, for home users and uh, small offices uh, to create uh, a design and to model I know, um, accurate things uh, that could have a blueprint or something. And well, so um, uh, first of all, uh, I'll show an example. Uh, what problems uh, do I face as an architect? when I, I try to use Blender for, uh, for my I know, uh, first project presentation. So, uh, of course, uh, as an architect, first of all, you need to do some sketching by hand. You, you need to make uh, some ideas on a paper. And after that, you start uh, sketching with 3D. You start modeling some things. Uh, and when I started modeling, um, my first project, it looked something like this. Okay, I turned on Blender, uh, watched a few tutorials how to model a house, a building, and, well, you create a plane. That's fine. You uh, mark the vertices, duplicate them, then um, connect them, Duplicate them again and connect. Of course, you have to imagine where you'll have windows. You start extruding all of this. You, you have to know uh, what the silhouette is. Um, you mark cover faces. And so and on. You're, well, uh, the whole sketching. Uh, contains of extruding and joining vertices together to get some, I don't know, real view. Uh, the problem is I don't have time for that. I need uh, my, my sketch to be read in a few days. I need some models, some, some visualizations. So uh, I need uh, to have a direct uh, mind flow to a program. I need to be able to model anything what's in my mind without thinking. Uh, where will be my window, as I said before? What will be a still hit? I don't need to plan a step in front of me. So uh, everything uh, I need to know right now is a conceptual building plan and some hand-drawn images. And um, I, I, I need to combine them with some uh, real scale measurements and, and well and my workflow uh, workflow should uh, contain of creating polygons extruding them easily without editing those and joining those vertices because imagine if I have eight floor building and um, I need to well modify it and and I need all every time I will need to go to my model and push and pull these vertices up and down and and uh, well uh, and arrange them before everything starts to look nice. So um, we thought that a good idea would be to create a tool that automates vertices uh, combining, 
vertices should be combined uh, automatically. If anyone used uh, Google SketchUp, uh, you'll know what I mean. And I I'll show a small video how creating polygons from closed edge loops should look like and how a um, good way of extrusion should look like. So it's a very short video, so oh, here it is. The only thing you need is uh, to be able to draw some edges uh, snapped to the x, x y, uh, z axis and be able to draw those edges on the faces and that's, that's it. You, you just need a tool to be able to create a polygon and extrude it easily. Oh, sorry. So uh, the next thing uh, which is very important uh, uh, for creating uh, our project this ability to uh, handily measure uh, the modal parts. Uh, the best way to do that is dimensional chains. It's well, it's used in uh, every blueprint that architects or engineers or I know, I know uh, professionals use. So, um, I had a slide on for this. Um, yeah, yeah uh, that's a dimensional chain just in, in 3D models, illustration. And uh, of course, uh, to work fast, this is not enough. Uh, we need these dimensions to be active. Uh, what I mean by saying that, uh, in AutoCAD, you always have to adapt the dimension to the changes of a model, of a 2D, 2D drawing. Uh, these dimensions uh, must react to the model changes. So, I mean, if you uh, stretch your object, dimensions uh, should uh, show the stretched result. Uh, well, Bl Blender has the dimensions, but you need to select edge uh, to see that dimension. So it's it's uh, not comfortable if uh, if you're working with a uh, well dynamic model, some some house of lots of things, and you need uh, to always know which thing is uh, in, in in what distance from other things. Um, uh, the, this is also a necessary for a layouting feature, which is uh, also um, necessary for printing uh, drafts, because you can't, can't build anything without drafts or, uh, well, you know. So, uh, these dimensions, oh, for a drafting tool, so I'll demonstrate a very, let's say, um, demo how how the layouting feature should look like in Blender. Uh, you need to be able to, um, sorry, I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> so you need to be able to stretch uh, model views to the layout sheets and to print uh, those blueprints. Um, and how the concept looks like, like now, looks right now. So, oh, sorry. Zoom it. Voila. Uh, in reality, uh, we should work as uh, we have uh, separate cameras for each view. And uh, why uh, it, it, it's a good idea to uh, do drawings like that is that if you uh, edit a model in 3D space, uh, the cameras uh, that are showing projections, top, right, and side view, uh, are updating automatically, and you don't need to edit those blueprints separately. And uh, dimensions is, is smart dimensions is uh, not only needed for um, annotation purposes; it 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 also used in parameter editing, uh, about which we'll uh, talk just us. So yeah. Uh, so, in a, in a 3D graphics world, uh, objects basically um, basically contain only. Um, uh, 
only uh, uh, visual and spatial information. To prepare this object for real manufacturing, we need to add uh, some additional data. For instance, physical material properties, some descriptions, uh, some uh, uh, standard size sets, uh, and other di different uh, parameters. So, 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 so. So, for instance, we have uh, this uh, bolt. So, and we have. Uh, uh, length, uh, diameter, and other dimensions labeled. And uh, by changing these uh, dimensions, we, uh, we will make uh, another ball types without need to remodel it. So basically, in, uh, now in Blender, it, uh, it is made by using custom properties. But uh, to meet the needs of uh, designers uh, and engineers, we, we, we su suggest some enhancements to this uh, custom properties uh, panel in Blender. So firstly, to, to, to make more space for properties, we suggest to add a separate tab in a properties panel. So, and uh, engage a bit this, uh, this uh, custom properties panel and to, to add uh, and other types of properties. For instance, te text properties for descriptions, some, um, some other type of properties maybe. So, okay. Okay. so, uh, uh, so Donatus will show yeah, uh, how, how it uh, should work. Yeah, how now in our prototype. Yeah. Uh, we can have different uh, bolt bolt uh, uh, size and, uh, modifications. So you can have a lo longer bolts and something like that, and you can save it in the uh, list, like um, I don't know, longer bolt, and it appears here. So if we have smaller bolt or something, we can always. Uh, navigate through our variations and we we don't need to remodel it each time or use component options so if if you have a, a furniture uh, system like sofas with um, some additional parts or something you can easily turn uh, some parts on or some parts off and to to well you use use that uh, component type easily okay um Oh, I, I I lost my mind my my mind a little so <laughs> sorry. Oh, oh, so um, yeah, we can we can have some different uh, variations of our furniture. I said before, well, it's. Gone, not going to happen. It's very mm, buggy, so. Okay, uh, I don't know this. No. So, uh, another uh, important uh, feature uh, uh, on which we are working now, so it's a uh, node, node editor, but a node editor for for working with uh, these custom parameters. Now in Blender, you usually work with nodes uh, on materials, on uh, composition, but uh, in uh, complex technical assemblies, nodes uh, would be very useful when uh, showing hierarchy, uh, showing uh, which object uh, depends on other objects and uh, graphically visualize it. So, so we suggested to add uh, to existing node editors, uh, custom properties uh, node editor for, for, for dealing with uh, these uh, spatial parameters and other custom parameters. Well, um, I'll show you how it, it should look like. So um, 
Basically, if we need to transfer some more information like descriptions, um, yes, no information. As example, a uh, furniture uh, system has a chair or doesn't have a chair, so it's yes, no parameter. Uh, color parameters. Uh, it's, uh, it would be very similar to parenting uh, uh, in the way that uh, if we move sofa, sofa is in the uh, top of a hierarchy. Um, it has legs, and legs has um, plastic covers, screws, and 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 other attributes. And uh, why this is necessary? This is necessary because when you create a building, you have lots of objects, hundreds or thousands of objects, and each object has its own parameter. It may be color, it may be uh, size, it may be description. As I mentioned before, it may be a snow parameter. And uh, as uh, object uh, grows bigger, it becomes uh, harder to control it. So the uh, visual interface of uh, those dependencies and those parameters is uh, critical for the uh, job uh, for architects, let's say. And uh, even Autodesk is now trying to create some plugins. Uh, well, uh, Autodesk users are trying to create some plugins uh, to add the node feature to the Autodesk Revit because it beca became too big to control all the parameters, and it's, it's very hard to do that as well. And uh, uh, our project uh, somehow connected with our project. Uh, recently, two robotic mechanics um, asked us for help for their project. So uh, their project was about uh, making a robot and uh, controlling that robot uh, with Blender, through the Blender. Um, so uh, the idea was to connect the robot uh, to a blender with a bone system uh, to be able to oh, it's not working oh yeah uh, to be able to move robot uh, in the blender and it sh it uh, should move in, in the re real life so if you animate a robot in the blender it moves as an animation moved in the real life uh, the only problem we faced um, was we had to use additional software. SolidWorks uh, to make precise part drawings, because um, uh, Revit doesn't have tools to do really precise drawings. You, you can, as I mentioned, you can't make blueprints from them. Uh, so uh, this motivated us even more, uh, because uh, we, now, we now know our direction. We want to make Blender more accurate, and uh, I'll show you a video how how our programmer. Uh, managed to <laughs> do some some progress with uh, moving that robot. Robot uh, skeleton isn't moving right now. He, he in, in a weekend he just made that if he changes uh, uh, its parameters in Blender, it moves its uh, motors. But I I, th I think in the next presentation we'll have a moving robot hand <laughs> Blender. Uh, so. Uh, for the conclusion, uh, now we are a team of five people, two architects, uh, two programmers, and uh, marketing specialist. And our, our concept is almost done. But uh, as everybody knows, it's, it's hard to find good programmers, or you need to pay them a lot. And so we have pretty good programmers, but everyone is working at their free time. So. Uh, we are pre preparing crowdfunding campaign uh, to get some f foundation and to start our project and to start getting things done. So uh, thank you for your attention. Okay, we have time for a few questions. Yeah, so maybe you have some questions. Uh, first of all, great job. Uh, I hope it goes uh, well for you. But I have a question I got, uh, about the, you say you want to be more accurate. Yes. And, uh, yes. What's, uh, in the future, are you trying to use uh, curves instead of uh, vertex? No. Uh, uh, we would like to be able to uh, 
draw, uh, let's say, the edge, like it's done in SketchUp. You are drawing the edge. You see the length of an edge you are drawing. If you need a six meter edge, you draw yeah, six I, meter I, I understand that, but oh. is it better using curves instead then? Uh, it is better if you can uh, create uh, polygons through, through, uh, through the closed edge loops. Because, well, it, it, it's harder to edit model uh, uh, through the vertices. Uh, the most important thing, um, if, if I understood your question correctly, of course, um, to be able to extrude any face without entering, without entering edit mode every time. You just need to turn on the tool that is uh, designed for extrusions. You extruded something, draw the, some new profile on that extrusion, extruded it again, and draw another profile on that extrusion, extruded it again, and you, you, you're just forming your form from lots of extrusions drawn on the created faces. Yeah, but if you have a, a circle with a 32 vertex and you extrude this, it's not going to be accurate in, in terms of a mechanical. You, you, you have to interpolate this, and you have, you, if you want a higher resolution, how are you going to do yes, that? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, you need to do this, but, uh, well, it's, it's just a beginning of concept. And, of course, uh, uh, you can't draw on the uh, round surfaces because uh, you won't get an accurate form. But, but uh, I, I, I know, well, well, that's a problem, but uh, it's not so easily solved. Of course, you'll need to use some uh, Boolean operations or something to combine those objects, because, well, you're right, you can't draw a, a plain uh, profile on a round surface. So. Okay, thank you. Maybe one more question. Uh, thanks. I wanted to know about the, the thread that you had, the bolt, because I saw the bolt, but I didn't see that there was a, an option for threads per millimeter or per centimeter. Did you add the helix, or was that missing? No, no. Uh, uh, we didn't add the helix. It, it was just for demonstration purposes for a, for a main principle, uh, how the sets work. If, if, you, if you need some uh, different helix, it, it would appear as a different parameter. You would have to dimension it, you would have to save it, and you, you, you could create some sets with uh, different uh, helix types on a screw or a bolt. Mm -hmm. Okay, secondly, will you export your, your uh, work with the knife and the other tools to the project, or how will you deal with the knife that you created? Well, uh, we just created simple animation for, to, to demonstrate how it should look like, and that's it, but uh, now our programmers are analyzing the a blender code so okay so you haven't done the coding yet yeah yet. we okay. we've uh, we've really just started to uh, do the actual development and of course we, we need to get no the not even a blender but also a source code so thank you okay thank you very much next question is after this talk probably and now we are waiting for skeletons yeah. thank you okay thank you Yeah, yeah, I think works fine.